And so it, it separated timelines are sometimes easier to work with in terms of rigging them. They might be easier to animate, but it's a little bit trickier to deal with the exposure. So it's really a personal preference thing. I know a lot of studios that work with one timeline, and I know a lot of studios that work with separated timelines. But I wanted to expose you to that concept so that you can find out what's going to work best for you. Now, um, the last thing that we should mention in terms of working with your master template is that sometimes you might figure out that something isn't working right and um, you need to go back and adjust your template. And you can right click on your template and do an edit template. And when you do this, what it does is it sort of opens up a separate mini scene and that scene is your template. And you can make modifications to your template here. I need to warn you right now at this stage that if you make modifications to your master template, and you already have action templates that are referring to that master template, you could get yourself into trouble. Because what happens is, when you use a master template, the master template defines your overall rig. If you, for example, change the order of layers in your timeline, and then you try to drag and drop an action uh, template back on top of it, if the order is different, it won't drag on properly. Um, there are things that you can do, though, in your master template, one of the things that's done a lot is adding new drawings because let's take the hands as an excellent example. Hands are often, this is the case with hands. Um, you know, you might be creating a whole bunch of new hands for one particular episode and then you want to make sure that your hands are available for everyone else who's using this rig after the fact. So if, if that's the case and um, you want to make sure that you can add some new hands in here, you can always just add hands directly in your master template or if you've already created them in a scene, you can temporarily drag and drop them into a library and just label that template hands. And then you can drag and drop the template hands back into your master template. I will make one word of caution though. When you're working this way, when you're adding things to templates, when you're changing templates, I highly recommend that you make a copy of the master template before you make any additions on it. That way, you still have the original master template, but I can take my copy. Let's pretend this is my copy of my master template. And I can go back and I can add a new hand. I just duplicated the hand using that duplicate button. And let's say if I want to just um, use my brush tool to add a thumb in there or something. So now I have a new hand, and it's um, been added to my master template. So I now have access to this when I open my master template in a new scene. So now that I've saved that, I need to actually save it in here. And if you want to, you can also save as a new version, and that's often a good idea. If you didn't already copy the template before editing it, it's probably a good idea to save and copy at the same time. And then you just hit the close, and close is now going to close that template, and we can go back to our scene. Now, one thing that you need to be aware of, though, is templates that have already been dragged into, into your scene will not include the new information that I've added into my master template. And the reason for that is that um, the, the copies that when you drag and drop your master template into your scene, it's creating a copy or an instance of the original one. And we did that deliberately because um, it's often the case that animators want to uh, really change the rig a lot as they're animating. Um, they might be adding a bunch of things, they might be deliberately skewing and squashing and stretching and bouncing and all this other stuff. And if a team of people are all sharing the same master rig and one animator does something that is going to affect somebody else's animation, it's too dangerous. So. The way that we did this is when you drag and drop your master template into your scene, now you can make any modifications that you want on your master template and it won't, it won't mess up the original in your library. And if you get to the case where you want to have access to some of those things that are in the master in a scene that's already in progress, then you can just uh, make some smaller templates of those things that you want to access. So for example, if I added extra hands, I could just have a hand template here and I can drag and drop it into my scene to add those drawings into my scene um, and then update the uh, original template in here. So that was a lot of stuff to mention on the subject of master templates. 
Um, I'm not going to repeat everything I just said when I go to Animate Pro, but let's take a look at Animate Pro. And this is the same thing that it would be for Harmony. But there are a couple of differences. Okay, so now the, ma the first major difference when we're talking about master templates in Animate Pro and Harmony is that now we're dealing with a node-based compositing system. So it's very important to understand the difference between working in the timeline and working in the network when it comes to creating rigs. And what happens is that the timeline, if I look at the connections of the elements here in my timeline, the timeline can only display so much information. It's limited in what it can display in terms of these parent-child relationships. For example, if you know one element is a parent of another and it's a child of a different one, but that one is a parent of a child of a thing, you know, like it's the timeline can't display all that. It only can display direct parent-child relationships. If I look in my network view, though, and forgive me that it's a little bit um, there's a lot of stuff in here, but but you can even see just when you look at some of these effects, you know, that you have the mouth that goes into a color override that goes into a cutter and that's going into a separate color override and there might even be a, a third copy of the mouth going down to the composite. These sorts of connections are much more difficult to display in the timeline. And for that reason, if you try to do the same thing that we just did in Animate and, and if you create your master template by dragging and dropping the left side of your timeline into your library, it might work. It might, but it might not and it's not worth taking the chance. So the, the best thing to do is to select the node and usually in Animate Pro and Harmony you'll create a group and that group will contain your rig and it might even have subgroups inside of it. It probably would be a good idea for it to have subgroups inside of it um, but in this case they all have the, the rig all in one uh, major group here. But um, you know you just need to have one master group that is going to contain the entire rig and then you can select this group and you can do a control C or a command C on Mac and then if you go into your library we still have to do that same thing that we did before where we right click and we select right to modify and then we can select the right side of the library and do our control or command V and then that's going to pop up that same rename dialog and it does make it make its attempt to um, to find a good name for this, so let's just give it a better name, Karate Rabbit Master, just like we did with anime. And so that's going to create now our, our master template here, and that's much more safe to do it that way than it is to do it in the timeline in, in Animate Pro. So I just want to point that out because um, it, it it is important to understand that the connections that it shows here are not exactly what it's showing over here. Um, and if you're dealing with simple rigs, it's fine to do it in the left side of the timeline, but I would recommend that you get in the force of habit of using your network view instead. And then there's just one other thing I want to mention, and this character isn't the best example of, um, of how to do this because it hasn't been set up this way, but let's say sometimes what you want to do is you want to have a character that is, um, let's say you're working with separated timelines you've got the front view on one you, or sorry you've got the yeah you've got the front view on one template you've got the side view on a different template so on and so forth what you might also want to do is you might want to create some mini templates for example for the head and i'm just going to simulate that by sticking oh it can't group it sorry i need to uh it's like not a very good connection um cuz i got a bunch of different things going on let's just try a couple of these let's just pretend Let's try a couple of those. Those should group together. Let's group. All right, so let's pretend that this group right here represents the head. And it represents the head from the front view. You might just want to create a rig or a template out of the head for the front view, and out of the head for the side view, and out of the head, and so on and so forth. And the reason is that sometimes you might be working in the front view, but you might want to swap out just the head to go from one view to another view. And one way of doing that is to have the different heads and then to 
um, play with the exposure of the different heads as well. So let me just um, simulate this by pretending that this that these are different. I'm sorry for the not having a very good example open for you guys here, but um, this is a bit more of a complicated rigging concept. And what I'll try to do is I'll try to expand this later on by coming up with a, with a rig that actually has this in it. But but let's say that one of these is the front head and one of these is the three-quarter head. Then you can control the position of both of these heads at the same time by making them share a peg. So let's pretend this peg um, is connected to both of these heads. Then you control the, the position with the master peg for both heads and then you can swap the exposure for each head kind of like what I showed you in Animate a minute ago when I had the front view and the side view on separated timelines. In this case now we're having multiple heads within one character group and then we're going to swap the exposure on the timelines of those heads. And by having one master peg, when you swap the exposure, if you're animating things with the master peg in the right place, then those heads will swap in the right place. And if they don't swap in the right place, it's not the end of the world. You just go back and you move it. And you make sure that you have one peg that is the parent of all of your head elements, and then you can move them all together. And so that concept, I know, is a little bit more advanced. And what I'll try to do is I'll try to prepare um, um, an example next week that's going to show that concept a little bit better. Uh, but the main concept that I wanted us to talk about today in terms of master templates was that when you're working in Animate, you need to save your master template from the left side of the library. When you're working in Animate Pro or Harmony, you need to save your master template from a grouped module in your network. And in both cases, you select the right to modify and you stick it in your library. And this library can be any folder on your file system. So that's what I want to talk about for this week. I will continue talking about templates next week. We are going to talk about action templates and swapping in drawings. And hopefully I can also show you a bit more of a, a sophisticated example of swapping heads out and that sort of thing. So take care and see you next week.